Allow me a couple of minutes to do a little bit of housekeeping before we get into the main event here. Over the past weekend, I noticed that, hey, over there on Rumble, managed to tick over 1,800 followers. That is tremendous stuff, and I thank you very much for following me over on Alt Tech, and hopefully in the future, just straight out at mainstream video sharing platforms, and a couple of the moves that have been happening recently that we're going to be talking about are quite instrumental in making that very much a near future reality and then over on youtube crossing that 8,000 subscriber count mark that is huge that is fantastic it means the world to me and i thank you all very very much that is what i wanted to hit before the end of the year and if we can get a collective between the two platforms if we can get a collective oh i don't know 10,000 followers that'd be pretty dope but i just wanted to take that time to thank you all very much for placing faith in me to deliver you the information and to deliver you the news on a multitude of different topics with a level of humor, honesty, and sincerity is pretty scarce across this vast media landscape. With that said, we have a little bit of an insight as to what we can expect over there at the bigger budget side of life with a couple of significant trailers dropping here in the past little while with Edgy the Hedgy taken front and center for Sonic the Hedgehog 3 which is going to be a big it's going to be a big film relatively speaking because the Sonic the Hedgehog movies well the first one came out right in the swings or rather uh, the full court pre uh, press of 2020 I know the second one did reasonably well and this one right here well it's it's probably going to end up doing the best I would imagine because they've just been kind of building okay it's one of those few franchises that's out there especially in Hollywood that has been building with incremental installments and taking a look around at what is scheduled for Christmas well there's a good chance when this thing drops on the 20th of December it's going to be the go-to family fair that is of course you know there's any life left in the tank when it comes to disney live action remakes which is the other side of this coin right here because yeah for as much adulation for sonic the hedgehog 3 there was out there where yeah okay you got to see keanu reeves shadow the hedgehog and oh yeah he's got his gun so it's like okay this is this is ah uh, this has a high probability of cringe because let's be honest that's what shadow the hedgehog is incarnate and this is coming from you know somebody whose first video game memory is of playing sonic 2 but i digress we also got to see a live action stitch from lilo and stitch which is kind of crazy to think about because that was one of those tail end disney films i think that came out when i was in seventh grade or something like that made elvis hot again for a second because what was it uh burn in love that was the big track that they were using to push that i think but to see it now go through the grinder of an originality at the house of mouse and to come out the other side with a live action version of it kind of strange that we've got to this point in time but there are still so many renaissance classics which are they still planning on doing that hercules one which bro i i don't even know man because mufasa mufasa is a disney's big offering coming out you know the lion king prequel and not even like a good old-fashioned animated fair we're going live action live action with that one and i think that's going to be an awfully a good bellwether because lilo and stitch yeah, for as much as people think it's like, uh, Stitch looks real-ish in the trailer, we're not going to play it or anything like that. That one might do fine, because uh, outside of a couple of creepy leftists, thinking that the main character isn't dark enough, even though they are authentic Samoan, is that what they're trying to go for? But whatever, man, like they're off on their race realism kick that's just absolutely wild to think about. But in general, people seem relatively all right with it. And this upcoming weekend with the release of Moana 2, Disney could be on something of a role heading into 2025. But unfortunate for them, yeah, their first big release of the year is coming mid-March and yeah, it's going to be Snow White. And here, I, I want to tread a little bit lightly. I don't want to play this trailer, mostly because at time of recording, it, it's very much the way that this trailer is presented, which you can go ahead and we'll, we'll scroll through here, actually. Because I think, I think I can get away with, you know, some still frames on this one. But it's funny, whenever Disney wants to do these live action remakes, they're always poised to just go and, oh, make a couple of casting changes, if you will. But in regards to the villain, you know, Gal Gadot playing the evil queen, looking, looking quite on point with her animated predecessor. But it's funny, there was some, there was some rumors that were coming out, I think, last week or the week before, uh, between 
now when uh, Rachel Ziegler had her big, you know, mega inspired meltdown, there were some rumors that, you know, things were getting you know, touched up again. Uh, there was some rejiggering going on with the plot for like the 15th time to make a live action Snow White more faithful to the original. And you can tell, you can tell rather in a couple of spots here, uh, it uh, looks like there's a lot more focus of Snow White in the dress doing I guess perceivably girly things somewhat. I don't I don't buy it at all whatsoever. She's singing a lot. Okay, looking very much out of place and bro, it's like even just take even just take Snow Brown out of it. She's not even cute looking. Like to say that she would be the fairest of them all and I understand, you know, in previous versions or maybe even in this one, the fairest of them all has been redefined as being the most just. So whatever man there she is with the cape on and yeah she's got this dumb look on her face and oh yeah gal gadot's a cardboard cutout looking ass this is going to be a horrifically acted film as well because rachel not exactly known for her chops okay you know the only time that she's given a somewhat convincing performance was when she was doing that variety interview with the wall-eyed little mermaid this time last year but yeah, you know, it's got the creepy evil witch. And then, oh, uh, the prince, even though she's not going to be saved by the prince. Now, all of a sudden, he's in it again? Like I said, I don't know what to take away from this, albeit leaked trailer at this point in time. Albeit said it looks to be of high enough quality for me to believe that this is ultimately going to come out later. And there's some trailers that have been going around, you know, from the people that have been checking out either Gladiator 2 if they had a lobotomy recently. Or they want to go keep their gay friends friend company and checking out wicked we've heard rumors that there is a snow white trailer that's out there but until it becomes official i want to play it and you know even still you know the only thing that we're missing in there is listening to the dulcet tones of an entitled brat from hoboken i think we can probably do without but it'll be interesting to see how well mufasa does okay because i really think i really think that that's going to be the bellwether to see if there is any legs left in these live action disney remakes lilo and stitch again you know for as well received as a live action trailer was which is still you know fine ish disney's bread and butter is their animated fair it's always going to be their animated fair and there has always been a shot clock on these live action remakes because people are starting to catch on and they have for a while now that these are just lesser versions they don't have the staying power because you remember lion king right like it made 1.9 billion dollars aladdin made over a billion dollars how many people talk about mulan that came out but i would imagine that that one probably didn't do all that well and they could go ahead and hide that failure because it was released in 2020 and they could hide it behind you know premium purchases on disney plus but snow white is going to be out there for the world to see a mid-march and well it's, it's definitely going to be up against it because Disney reveals Snow White remake is set to blow its budget. And that's not the only thing that it's going to blow. Disney has revealed that the cost of making its live action remake of Snow White has ballooned to 269 nice point four. Oh, just go ahead and fulfill the meme. Okay, do is the 269.42 million dollars. Okay, by the end of 2023. And we know in 2024, they went back for another round of reshoots and how much more editing and how many additional scenes have been put on top of this. So we know at least, okay, and this would be a conservative estimate, 350 million, closer to four. And that's even before promotion. This is going to get out of pocket and Captain Black, Falcon, America, man, it actually has competition for the most overproduced, bloated budget coming out of Disney in 2025. Who could have thought that that was possible? It cast a, a dark spell on the outlook for Disney's entertainment segment, just as it was showing signs of improvement for the past five years. Its bottom line has been dragged down by the loss of Disney Plus streaming platform, which, guys, it's supposed to turn a profit this year. I bet. Which finally reported its first profit earlier this year. Yeah, that was one quarter thanks to artificial boosting of numbers but one quarter does not make an entire year it coincided with the end of a string of bad luck at the box office yes of course because it has the two highest grossing films of the year a sequel to moana is on the horizon and it looks to be tracking to be quite spectacular it's just how's the end of the year gonna go uh disney reports its fourth quarter earnings today and analysts are expecting earnings yeah per share to increase from uh one dollar eleven cents to oh from 
82 cents a share from a year ago. Yes, a while revenue is projected to rise 22.49 billion dollars from 21.24 billion. Snow White won't contribute to it. Yes, uh, because it isn't released until March of next year, which is when we'll figure out how detrimental the antics of Rachel Zegler has been on this project because outside of just you know everybody's simple disdain for the project or er, project in general like Halle Bailey didn't really do anything to dissuade people from going and checking out Little Mermaid and it's still what potentially broke even but in all honesty lost a bunch of money but Rachel Zegler yeah she's become the poster child and everybody's go-to pick for most insufferable person associated with Hollywood and yeah that's a very high bar but she clears it easily so you would think right because you take a look at her resume and outside of being a part of the Hunger Games franchise for the lowest performing barely broken even installment she doesn't have a hit okay like she was in a Spielberg movie, West Side Story, that was driving the narrative in Hollywood that, oh, I guess cinemas aren't coming back until the next week when, oh yeah, a little movie called Spider-Man No Way Home comes out, and it's like, oh no, maybe maybe, maybe the theaters are fine after all, and then what did she follow that up with? Okay, she was in Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods. Oh, shit. And what, in the next couple of weeks, she's gonna have a little A24 slasher flick, which I said, you know, is probably a lot more her speed, and then to have this big blockbuster Buster here to kick off 2025. Yeah, it's not going to look good, man. Just by the simple virtue of the way that A24 makes their movies, Y2K is more than likely going to turn a profit, okay? This Snow White going to make the $700 million necessary to break even? I highly doubt it. What do her career prospects look like with all of the baggage that she has in tow, with the number of bombs associated to her on her resume? Is that going to have a long-term effect on her Hollywood viability? Well, of course not. You'd have to be stupid to think anything to the contrary, because once you're in the Disney family, oh, you have multiple other places to be bounced around. Something else that Rachel was talking about earlier this year, if memory serves me correct, she wanted to be, and I think this was in the aftermath of the Acolyte, she wanted to be a part of Star Wars because something, something all about me, which is now, you know, under you know, the stewardship of Kathleen Kennedy, Star Wars has now become a vehicle for unbridled narcissists to tell stories about themselves. Lore and canon be damned. But despite the rumors of Marvel, you know, really changing course, of firing all of the activists, there's a potential that Rachel Zegler could be brought into the fold. Because according to rumors, and of course these are all rumors, all speculation at this point in time, Marvel wants Rachel Zegler for an un unidentified role. What is Kevin Feige thinking? Marvel could be eyeing none other than controversial Snow White actress Rachel Ziegler for as yet unknown role within the MCU. Just when you think Feige's decision making couldn't be any more questionable, reports like this start making the rounds. Hollywood scooper uh, My Time to Shine Hello recently stated on X that Marvel was interested in casting the 23 year old Snow White actress despite a string of unhinged public meltdowns that caused huge controversy for at or for Disney, rather. Marvel Studios want Rachel Ziegler for a role. What do you think that she should play? I don't know, a dumpster? Um, maybe an extra in the background? That seems to be something a little bit more her speed, but, you know, knowing the projects that Disney eventually does have on the horizon on the Marvel front... I mean, it's unclear what, if any role she'd take. It's possible Zegler could uh, become a key player in Marvel's upcoming reboot to the X-Men because, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of slots that need filling over there. And at this point in time, their standards for hiring aren't exactly all that high, so I could definitely see that happening. Or some other character in its vast comic book library because, yeah, you know, we're speed running our way out of the multiverse saga by wrapping everything up with bringing back Robert Downey Jr., but after the reboot, what are you going to do from there? Start focusing in on what made you guys popular to begin with, or by trying to fit a few more square pegs into round holes and keeping the fire alive of the MCU because at the end of the day, Disney is still a girl's brand. And Disney isn't one to overtly admit defeat. We'll have to see how this all goes. If a Snow White is an abysmal flop, I'm sure Rachel and everybody associated with that. Remember, the screenplay is written by one Greta Gerwig, 2023's A Darling, mastermind behind Barbie. Okay, make sure that she gets a requisite amount of crap for that garbage script that is obviously on the way. But then, of course, the future of Rachel Zegler, because at, 20, at 23, she could definitely 
have an about face and uh, learn from her mistakes or will she continue to fail upward like so many other contemporaries that she has in Hollywood? So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.